So what's really exciting today is Perplexity uh, launched something amazing. Perplexity Assistant, basically. What Perplexity, for, for those of you who don't know, is, is Perplexity is very similar to ChatGPT's OpenAI company. It's another company, basically, that launched their own sort of AI product a long time back. And I think what their target was uh, specifically to always have some, some source of information always tagged or attached to to whatever it was being generated. So it, it gave you more of a truthful answer as as uh, as a result, uh, whatever you might, uh, we can argue how true that is, but for the time being, I think that, that was better than nothing, right? So that's what they used to do. And, uh, but, but today they launched something called the Perplexity Assistant, which is, I think, very interesting. Uh, we, let's have a look at it, actually. Um, Play me the final song from the movie Interstellar. So yeah, basically you're you're tell me book the best Japanese, book the best Japanese for audio for a day. You're actually asking for something, not just a question, but sort of trying to do an action or like some task, right? That's I think just, just really finish good. reading this. What should and I do? So that's kind of that's that's pretty cool actually, in, in my opinion. So yeah, I'd look for a book. You want to give you suggestions, but summarize this page and send it to John. Yeah, sending it to John. That part is kind of interesting. So, because summaries were pretty obvious before, like ChatGPT and all these agents could summarize a lot of uh, content, but I think sending it to someone automatically, that part is interesting. Remind me two hours before the next Warriors game. That's pretty much the 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 trailer for it, but but yeah, it's a very very exciting. What that means is effectively agents have been launched today. And what so well, what is an agent? So we always had these ChatGPT sort of bots or models, right? That they generated text for us. So we asked a question. It would, that's what you call a prompt, and then it generates you an answer based on whatever the the prompt is. Now, it's always mostly been generating text or even possibly images and now video as well. But it's always been something like it just answers something for you. That's and it ends there. Basically, you can have a conversation, but that's kind of it. What agents are are literally like agents. Agents do things for you. Right. And so uh, what, what do you mean by do? So not just answering questions, but actually doing tasks. So if I along with an answer, if I would want to maybe have some sort of action on my phone, right? That's what these agents are going to do. They're going to book you a ticket. They're going to make a, an e email and not only draft it, but actually almost send it for you. So set reminders and stuff like that. I think that is a huge gap that I was anticipating pretty soon. I feel like 2023 is the, is the year that agents are going to blow up. This is what I think this is the start of it. Also, O1 or OpenAI, sorry, launched their new agents as well. It's called operator, by the way. Very exciting. I'm going to have a, a we're going to talk about that later too. But I think this is really exciting because it's on the phone and you can talk to it with audio. So it's pretty much Jarvis from Iron Man, but and it's on your phone so it can talk to you. But having said that, there's something very interesting. It's only available on the Play Store. I, I got to play with it because even though I am an iPhone user, I did get to play with it on Android. And what's really interesting is it does good things, but but there's definitely limitations on it, specifically with being able to access some apps and not being able to access others. You know, for example, it even if I wanted a, 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 to book a ride with the Lyft app, it kept giving me Uber. It kept suggesting and it stated that we don't currently support um, Lyft. So that's one thing. The other thing is, I think, that's interesting to think of is the sort of tasks were relatively simple. They're mostly one-step tasks. So just like, yeah, setting a reminder, calling a ride, you know, giving a direction. So it's just one step. What I think is going to be exciting, it's going to happen pretty soon, but what's going to be exciting is when they'll start to do more and more. So let's say maybe I just wanted my Tesla car repaired, right? I just say that to my agent, 
in the future, in the very near future. And it understands, oh, it's a Tesla. It also, because it knows what, what car I have, it's going to actually even suggest specifically for that car, which like service center is going to be closed. It's going to book me a ticket, ticket for like schedule, like some sort of uh, uh, time and date for, for an appointment. Maybe it's also going to suggest uh, like pricing for you. So it's going to do a lot more than just one thing. And I feel that that day is going to be exciting. And I'm, this is already pretty cool. But, but yeah, back to the Play Store, I feel like the reason they don't have it on iOS, usually all these apps, all these updates, they appear simultaneously, even in fact, earlier on iOS than Android. But I feel like this is the one case because for the assistant to work with other apps, it needs to become the central assistant on your phone. On Android, you can switch that to Perplexity Assistant. You have to do that. In fact, that's the first step you have to do to access this, and then you move on to sort of doing things. But I think what's really cool, or what's, what's, what's not cool, what's funny, is because Apple is so strict on, on even having one app control another app that I think they just haven't figured how to do that yet. Because this app is effectively controlling multiple apps for the time being. And so they're sort of trying to, I think they're delaying the iOS release because there's, there's quite a few bottlenecks right there, so. Oh, that's one interesting thing to think of, think of. But I tried it out. It works in, in, in a couple of different places. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a really good start. And I think this is exciting. This this is really cool because not only are these AI agents capable of thinking, they're capable of doing or acting upon the, th the thoughts that they had, right? And that's, I think, uh, really interesting and, and cool. So yeah, hope, hope. Uh, uh, I think, wait, let me actually show you some of the uh, the tasks that these can do. They, they showed some of these things, like over here. Awesome. Can you set a reminder for five minutes before tip off? It browses the web. This one browses the web and but finds like a time. Okay, time. so this one set like an intelligent timer. This this one, it's pretty basic. That's It sets a timer for you. Nothing, nothing too. It's this res reservation one that's pretty good, I think. Easily string together different questions and actions using the Perplexity Assistant. Let me show you by booking a dinner. Can you give me some restaurant recommendations in San Francisco that are good for a group? Here are some excellent restaurant recommendations in San Francisco that are great for group dining, casual and mid-range. Great, let's book a table at the first option. How many people are in your group and what date and time would you like to book? We have four people in our group and we'll book for tomorrow at 9 p.m. Opening open table. Awesome. Booked. Yeah, so that's pretty cool because it was able to understand that uh, it needed to know. First of all, it asked clarifying questions. That's a good thing. That's the one thing that I also have been thinking about. I think these models also need to know when to ask questions because a lot of the times uh, ChatGPT doesn't ask you questions. It just straight up starts, thinks, assumes whatever is has been provided is, is all there is and, and sort of gives you an answer based on that. But I think that this was cool because it asked how many people, what time, it knew what, what, what needed to be done. I think models are capable of totally doing that today. So I'm glad that they were leveraging that aspect really well. And uh, yeah, so they booked it. How are, you'll, you'll notice that the app that was used to book it was, it's just the browser. So they were using a browser to do it too. So I think a lot of the tasks are just going to be done on the browser some there's some support for apps like yeah like i was saying uber i believe okay i'm confusing two of the apps but i believe uber is the one that i tested a lot on this uh, on, on perplexity assistant because i was also trying out the other one the owen uh, operator but yeah you can do a lot of things uh, you can also it allows you to even just look through or, or screenshots of your of your uh, computer when you're specifically doing things and and here's this is a good example of this shows, I think, like four or five different things. Overall, this is a really cool thing. And I think this is, this is, this is cool. Like, uh, 2025, 2025 is turning out to be really cool. So, and this is just the start. So, yeah.